Hey everyone, George here and welcome back to the Art of Water. Today I wanted to go over a uh, new build that I'm doing here with you. This is going to be a three-part series basically on uh, escaping uh, what I consider a nano tank, which is a five gallon, and uh, trying to show you how to put that together and to maximize it so that you can put some uh, nano type fish in there. There's lots of new species out there these days that uh, work fantastically in a tank this size uh, as long as you create the ecosystem for them that uh, they're going to thrive in. And to do that, you just have to do some things right and make sure that you take your time and be patient and uh, uh, get the, the, uh, the right things together to make this work for you and to come up with an absolutely beautiful and stunning tank. As we do this three-part series, you're gonna see this tank sort of come to life. Now, these are really just things that I've had laying around. Um, I collect hardscape and uh, any extra pieces, I keep them. Uh, same thing with wood or tanks or substrate or any of those kind of things so that you know, eventually you have enough stuff. If you want to throw a scape together, you really have plenty of stuff to do that with. Now, I have already started basically uh, putting this together as far as the hardscape part of this. And uh, like I said, this is going to be a three-part series today. We're going to basically talk about the hardscape portion of it and uh, go over what we've done so far and then talk about what the next step is and so on and so forth. So the first thing that we have in here is about two and a half to three inches of substrate in here in the bottom. And uh, basically it starts out at two and a half to three. And as you can see, uh, for the purposes of an illusion going back and giving depth to your tank, you basically uh, raise that up in the back to about five to six inches. So you have a gradual grade on uh, your substrate that gives you the ability to build it and give it a, a sense of depth uh, that looks much nicer than if you were to just put substrate in there and have it all flat and uh, uh, even across the whole bottom of the tank. Now we are using Dragonstone in here. I had some nice pieces of Dragonstone left over from an old build. And uh, these pieces, as you can see, are just really, really nice pieces of Dragonstone. Uh, I do use um, uh, equal, or I don't use equal numbers. I do use odd numbers, unless I'm doing a real big build where there's so many stones that it doesn't make any difference. But basically, by doing that, um, it's more aesthetic looking to do it that way than it is to put an odd uh, number or an even number of stones in there that just sort of uh, don't give it the right look here. Now, I also use the golden ratio or the rule of thirds. That's uh, pretty much how I was taught to escape a tank. Uh, all the guys that do this stuff uh, that are very good at it, James Finley, uh, George Farmer, and the guys over at Green Aqua, uh, the golden ratio is something that uh, most of these people will tell you is just basically the best way to do it. Now, if you look at the rule of thirds, what I'm talking about with the golden ratio is you have a higher end on one end starting, you gradually drop it down and then down even lower on the third part of uh, your rule of thirds. And your eye is basically drawn to the center area of the aquarium, which is the most aesthetic way of looking at an aquarium. And uh, as you'll see, as we plant, uh, we're going to do some things also that are going to sort of bring that together and help out that process of, uh, of getting that rule of thirds to be in place and uh, followed throughout the whole build. So basically we have uh, a substrate in here called fluval stratum, which I use 
for almost all of my tanks. Uh, there are very few exceptions. If I do have a tank uh, that I'm strictly putting shrimp in or invertebrates in, then I will use something a little bit larger. Uh, I don't have any particular one in mind that I want to talk about today, but anyway, fluval stratum is a very mineral rich um, product that uh, is going to make your plants just absolutely thrive. It's got everything in there your plants need to get off to a good start. And uh, so I really, really love the product. Now, um, as you can see, uh, I do have the Dragonstone in here, and I also have a piece of wood that I found that I thought was a nice looking piece of wood. I had to play around with it quite a bit to get it to look the way I wanted to, but I think uh, it may change as I go through the process here, and as we go through this series, it may change over time, but we... Uh, can always do that uh, as long as we're cycling the tank properly, we're not trying to fast cycle it or something like that. Uh, it gives us time to sort of move things around a little bit while the tank is cycling uh, so that uh, we can get it exactly the way we want it. I think this is probably going to work out really well. I've sort of played around with the wood a little bit, had it in several different directions. And as you can see, what you want, of course, is to be able to see all sides. And when you look at it from this direction, it's also very aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So getting back to uh, the hardscape part of this build here, uh, we are going to basically go with this design here. And then our next step, of course, will be to plant the tank. Now, I have been using the dry technique here as of recent because I find that most of the people that uh, I am familiar with, that I talk with, that are scapers as well, uh, seem to find that this dry technique, uh, and I'll explain that to you really quickly, uh, seems to be the best way to get your plants going and to prevent them from that terrible melt that seems to happen sometimes when we're cycling a tank and we've planted it. Uh, basically, what the dry system is, is you will take your plants, whatever they happen to be, your carpet plants down in the front, your taller plants, of course you're going to go with shorter plants in the front and then gradually work your way back with taller and taller and taller plants until you have a background plant that is your highest, highest plants that will come above the line of the rocks here. So what you're doing basically is you're planting your plants in the dry substrate, okay? And then from there, you're basically going to mist those plants. You're gonna mist them really, really well, and then you're going to cover your tank and your filter and everything with cellophane, except for the light, and that will give the tank an opportunity to uh, before you fill it with water get those plants starting to root really really well now this technique has been found to be something that works really well because it really gives an opportunity for those plants to use all the minerals that are in that substrate to the best of their advantage and uh, and make a very strong root system on the plants which many people believe is why plants melt down in the first place. They're not typically rooted very well or something else in the cycle process, uh, possibly your tank being too hot. Uh, there's several different things uh, that uh, we don't really know for sure why. Uh, some tanks won't do it at all and they just happen to do uh, you know, they grow perfectly well with, with no melt going on. And then there's other tanks that uh, just out of nowhere, you find that you got a melt going on. So to prevent that, I've been using the dry technique, as I said, and I find that that works very, very well. Now, going on to our next uh, topic here regarding uh, putting uh, this together with the hardscape before we start to plant, I wanna talk about uh, cycling and water. The first thing I want to talk about is a couple of products that I use. Number one, 
neutral regulator with your fluval substrate, you're going to find that you're not going to need uh, something like this necessarily unless you're using a very soft rock which is basically a clay rock. Uh, Dragonstone, as you can see, gets its name because of the scaly type uh, indentations on the rock, which look like dragon scales. Uh, it's a very soft clay type rock, and uh, it is very soft. So it's gonna make, soften your water, number one, and number two, it is uh, actually going to mess around with your pH a little bit. Uh, what I do is I use this product just while I'm cycling the tank and uh, I don't use it on a regular basis unless I am doing a full uh, water change, 50% um, or more, I will add more of this uh, in there as well uh, just to make sure that uh, we uh, are keeping that pH at 7.0, which is primarily uh, the best pH for about 99% of all fish out there. There are some exceptions, of course, to that, but you need to read up on your fish and make sure that you know what kind of livestock you're putting in your tank. Of course, if you're building a shrimp-only tank, then you know forget everything I've said here. That uh, is something that you're gonna have to look up and do a little research on. The Stability by Seachem. All these products are by Seachem, except for the substrate, by the way. Seachem is a fantastic company. I love them. Uh, the products are a little bit more expensive than uh, your standard off-the-shelf products, but uh, they're well worth the money because what you get for your, for your money is really a superior product to everything else. Now, Stability is a product that uh, when you're cycling your tank, to get that cycle going really well and to build that, uh, that bacteria that we need uh, to get that uh, tank cycled stability is going to be something that you're gonna use for the first seven days of the cycle. And you're gonna do that because for the first two weeks, basically, you're gonna be doing 50% water changes in a small tank like this. That's a no big deal at all. Uh, it takes just a few minutes to do, but you're going to read the instructions on the back and you're going to find that stability is going to, as you're removing water, it's going to add back in those uh, nitrifying bacterias that are needed to get your tank cycled correctly. So we're going to be using a, uh, a uh, heater back here on this that really is a pre-programmed heater. It stops at about 78 to 80 degrees. Uh, if you have good circulation in your tank, it'll stay right around 78. If you have a very stagnant um, circulation in your tank, you could see it go up as high as 80. But um, basically, uh, with this, uh, you're going to have a good regulated temperature of around 78 degrees. Stability, again, is going to help you on that first seven days because you're going to add that back into any water that you've taken out of the tank and uh, at 50% water changes. Uh, and again, that's very important that you do 50% water changes for the first seven days of your cycle uh, to get that uh, water in top-notch shape. Now, the second product here um, basically is called Prime. Now, Prime basically is just a very high-end dechlorinator. It removes chlorine and chloramides and uh, really is a concentrated conditioner uh, for marine or fresh water that uh, you can use to really, uh, number one, uh, dechlorinate the water, but it also neutralizes ammonia as well. Uh, I know that that sounds kind of weird, but it really does detoxify ammonia's nitrites and nitrates. Uh, it's just a great product for that sort of thing. So it, it helps to keep your tank stable uh, while it is cycling. And I also use it for every water change after uh, the tank is cycled as well, just to make sure that it is getting um, really the best conditioner for the water and for your livestock that you possibly can. 
Now, the other thing that's important as you're cycling your tank is to do a test on your water frequently, just to make sure you know exactly where you're at. You don't want any ammonia, you don't want any nitrites, nitrates, any of that stuff. You want that cycle to really knock those things out so that you have a zero on all three of those items. Again, you know, when we're talking about pH or we're talking about water hardness, those are things uh, that are important as well. But nothing is more important than having neutralized ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates in your system so that uh, your tank is cycling properly. Some of the tools that we're going to be using, um, a lot of people use paint brushes. I don't use that. I actually found this some time ago at a kitchen store and it basically is, uh, it's got a rubber tip on it and it's very flexible, but it moves the rocks around in your tank very gently and grabs the rocks uh, or the substrate, I should say, and moves them very nicely to give them a, not a real abrupt sort of, uh, movement of the substrate but uh, a very controlled uh, a very controlled brushing of that substrate to get it exactly the way you want it you can pick up one of these things for three four five bucks at a kitchen store uh, you might even be able to find them at uh, you know your local uh, grocery store uh, it's a it's a pretty common kitchen item so getting back to uh, our uh, series here and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a build on this. Uh, as I said, we'll go over one more time what we're going to be using. Number one, we're using fluval subs, uh, substrate called stratum. And like I said, very mineral rich. I love it. It's great for plants. We're going to do a dry plant. Uh, dry planting process, which I think really helps to get your plants established real well. We're using Dragonstone for our uh, hardscape, and we're using this beautiful piece of ironwood. And I found this piece of wood, and I played around with it a whole lot. Uh, didn't think I was going to use it, but I'm getting a little tired of just using uh, spider wood and some of those kind of woods. I just thought this would be a more interesting piece of wood and um, give that nice balance to the tank here uh, that I'm looking for. So my recommendation is to, um, at this point, uh, we'll uh, let this uh, sort of uh, sit the way it is and I'll make any other changes that I might want to do over uh, the next week or so before we start planting. And when we do plant, we are going to be doing what I call a dry uh, plant, uh, which I think you're going to find is very, very good for stabilizing your plants, uh, preventing melts and things like that that uh, are very common with cycling. You're going to find that a lot of people just get so discouraged because their plants melt down and uh, they think they're done and they're really not. Basically, you can take melted plants you can cut the tops off them, and with a little patience, they will come back over time. So it's not like all is lost, but to prevent that whole thing and following up your tank and so forth, because plants can follow up your tank just like uh, too much food or waste or any other thing. Uh, plants are basically a waste when they're dying. They're, they're deteriorating and, and uh, putting toxins in your water and causing your, your water to have problems. So the next part of our series, the second part of our series, of course, will be planting and putting water in the tank and talking about the cycle a little bit more and then talking, of course, about that uh, dry planting that I talked about. And that's gonna be part two of this series. So if you're interested, please uh, subscribe, of course. Give me a thumbs up if you like the content of this and also uh, leave a comment if you have any comments about uh, what you think we should do next with this. There will be a black background on the back of this. That's what this is for down here. Right now it's a mat. I do have a mat already down here. That's great for leveling out uh, your tank once you put water in there. 
but I use this sort of matted material for the back of my tank sometimes because it doesn't have a lot of glare to it and uh, gives it a very, very nice uh, look to it that uh, sort of looks like it's it's an eternal look almost. There's no reflection coming off it or very little, if any. So anyways, uh, we'll uh, be doing part two of this series here in a week or so when uh, we start to do the planting. As I said, uh, the scape, the way it sits right now, I like it a lot. If you have any ideas, leave me some comments as to what you think I should do next. If you like it the way it is, which I do at this point, uh, let me know. Or if you've got some different ideas, let me know as well because I don't want to be messing around with it once I've planted and once I've started the cycle in this tank. Anyways, this is George with The Art of Water. Thanks for uh, watching the video. If you have any questions, like I said, leave a comment and I will get back to you. I try to get back to as many people as I can. So anyways, until next time, we'll talk again soon.